here. So uh, 57.1 plus negative 49.8. You are adding a positive and a negative. So what do you do? You actually sub subtract. You subtract the larger absolute value and the smaller absolute value. Yes, ma'am? You could do state change um, opposite, yes. I'm going to tell the rules of uh, additions just so I keep it straight there. So I'm always going to make them addition for me, but you could have made the stay change opposite, and then it's still subtraction. So you're going to take 57.1 minus 49.8. And remember to line up decimal points when you're subtracting or adding. And then I'll have to borrow. Um, and then is my answer going to be positive or negative? Positive. Positive, because the larger absolute value was positive. So it's got to be 7.3. Okay? So that's when adding two oppositely signed numbers. Yeah, oppositely signed. All right. This one, negative 25.63 plus negative 4.7. Okay, here's the second problem. Negative 25.63 plus negative 4.7. You have addition of two signs with two numbers with the same sign. So what do you do with those numbers? Just add them. Just add them together. So 25.63 plus 4.7. You're just going to add those, the two absolute values. So here I get 3, 13, 10, 3. Okay, so I get positive or negative? Negative. Why is it negative? Because you were adding two negatives. So you add the absolute values, keep the sign of both. That's what your answer should be. By the way, on YouTube, guys, you can always fast forward me. Or make me go very, very... Slowly. Okay, so you can do that just by making the time go fast or slow. So if you're like, Mr. I get this part, then fast forward me. And then maybe it's the part where I talked a little bit quicker, you can make me go slower. That's what's cool about YouTube. That's your answer on that one. Okay, and I wonder how it would look if you slowed me down when I was slowing down. Yeah. You can test that. Let me know how it goes. Oh. Yes. Other than me running, the slowest part is me. 37 Okay, go ahead and work that problem out. You are adding a positive and a negative. And here, guys, you've got to be careful with the fractions because you're adding two numbers with opposite signs. So you've got to do the larger absolute value minus the smaller absolute, absolute value. Which one's the higher absolute value? 7 eighths is the higher absolute value. 5 twelfths is the smaller absolute value or the lesser absolute value. So just subtract these two. Um, you can subtract fractions if you get common denominators. What is a LCD? This yes, man? 24. 24. So I'm going to multiply this by 3 thirds, this one by 2 halves, and then I get 21 20 fourths minus 10 20 fourths. And again, I'm subtracting them. So I get, yes, sir? Um, 11 get 11 20 fourths, but is it positive or negative? Why? Because the 7 eighths is bigger. Yes, the 7 eighths is the larger absolute value. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Did you have a question or you just wanted an answer? No, I was just answering. Awesome. Thank you, Ethan. So 11 20 fourths positive. <laughs> Do you guys remember these rules? Are these not, these shouldn't be like, wait, if, they're, if they have the same sign, you just add them? It should not be new. It should be a reminder. Are you guys doing well so far? Oh, and then this one comes. You were doing well, and I hope you continue, but this will determine that. Go ahead. So it's 8 and 11 twelfths uh, my, or plus negative 3 and negative 9 and 3 tenths. I should say my numbers right.
Okay, before you give me the answer, maybe you're not even there yet, is the answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. Why is it negative? You, you know it has to be negative. Carly? Yep, larger absolute value, it's got to be negative. So whatever your answer is, better put negative, and then hopefully you get the right numbers. So first get those common denominators, and if you can't subtract that first, borrow. Yes, sir? Let me check it out while you're doing it. Sorry, where is it? It's close. Did you get it? Yeah, 18 sixtieths minus, I got 55 sixtieths. Okay, oh, okay. And then you switch it around. Yeah, yeah, don't switch it around. Yeah, keep it the right order, but then you gotta borrow it. Even. That's what's up. Um, oh, you change them both into improper. Yeah. And what's the common denominator? Ten. Oh. That's okay. Try to get that common denominator. So you have to switch these up. Yeah, because then this is the hard part. Yes, um, you would get negative 37. Let me show you guys how to do this. This one's tough, guys. And I'm seeing the same answer, so it's not like you're uncommon. Okay, with mixed numbers, guys, it's a little trickier. So that's why I like using that vertical format, because if I don't, I'm, I'm going to get really confused. Okay, don't I have to take nine and three tenths? According to my rules for adding numbers with opposite signs, and I have to do it like this, okay? I'm gonna have to do it like this. This makes it easier with mixed numbers. What was that common denominator you guys were all getting? 60, 60. so I'm gonna do six, six, uh, five fifths. So I get 18 sixtieths and 55 sixtieths, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you don't want to just flip those around and do 55 minus 18 because you're going to get a, an answer that you're going to have to do an extra step to flip it around. Just If you always do it this way, you always get it right. Can I do 18 minus 55? So I'm going to borrow, make that an 8. And you'll see how your answer is very close. So what happens when I borrowed 1? What did I actually add here? I added 60 sixtieths, which gives me... 78 sixtieths. So I'm going to cross that out. Now it's 78 minus 55, 23 sixtieths. 8 minus 8, 0, so you don't put anything there. Positive or negative? Remember our answer's got to be? That's the answer. Now, so how many of you got negative 1 and what was it, 37 sixtieths? Is that what you guys were getting? Okay, you know what your answer is? It's so, it's super close. It's actually this. It's, it should have been negative 1 plus 37 sixtieths, which guess what that gets you? It get, but you don't, write, you don't write it this way, right? You have to write, that's why I don't do it this way. That's weird. But do you see what you're getting? What's 60 sixtieths minus 37 sixtieths? 23 60s, and we knew it was negative, so careful with that way. Yes, I'm glad we went over that. Yes, ma'am. Did you have to like, change the mixed numbers into improper fractions? Yes. Did you do that? C did you get CT? Did you end up doing getting the right denominator? You can. The numbers are just really big, but you did you get it? Uh, I didn't do that. I, I, I would avoid doing it, especially when your um, whole number of parts are big, because then you get these big numbers, and you got to keep track of them. I'm going to throw one of those on the test, by the way. So be ready for that. Possibly. Okay, let's move on here. 4.5 minus negative 3.7. All right. Um, this is a subtraction problem. Do you have to keep it as a subtraction problem? No, because in fact, addition makes this easier. So what's the rule for making a subtraction into addition? Stay. Change. Opposite. Change. Opposite. Okay, so it's really 4.5 plus 3.7. And I want to go ahead and get the answer from you guys, and then 
we'll move on. Sam has it. Marshall, CT, Morris, Violet. Marin, what'd you get? 8.2. Positive or negative? Positive. 8.2. Okay. Let's line up the decimal points to get 8.2. All right, nice. Negative 6.01 minus 8.9. You could keep it that way as long as you're either thinking of it or working it out as stay, change, opposite. So what would the stay do? It'd keep negative 6.01 the same. Change to addition. And what's the opposite of 8.9? Negative 8.9. So what am I actually doing with those two numbers? They're, I'm adding two numbers with the same sign. So I'm actually just adding them. 6.01 and 8.9, and like I said, we're adding them. So if you know your rules for addition, you can apply them even to subtraction. That's why I like just knowing one set of rules. One, nine, 14, positive or negative though? Oh, I heard two things, I need one. Oh, I still hear two things. It's gotta be negative. Let me see, who knows why it has to be negative? It must be negative, but how do you know that? Uh, let's go Morse. Uh, opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but I mean, it, it, a negative plus a negative doesn't that give me a positive. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Keep the sign of the bigger number. Mm -hmm. That's when you're adding uh, numbers with opposite signs. You're right. But here, even if you remember that, Marin. Don't they both have negative? So my answer's gotta be negative. So you can actually keep that rule and it still would work. It still would work. Okay. You guys are ready for this one. Um, this was a tough one. 11 twelfths minus 14 fifteenths. That's semi-tough, I guess. I hope you guys can do it. All of you can do it. We gotta be careful. Okay, you can keep it subtraction or you can make it addition, but you got to know which one's bigger. You got to want to know which one's actually bigger in absolute value, in absolute value. So which one's bigger? This is a, this is a number sense. Kate, which one do you think? 14 15 is actually further away from zero. Um, and you'll see how close they are. It's really cool how close they are. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get those common denominators right now. So what's the common denominator? It's our favorite number today. 60. 60. All right. What do I multiply 11 twelfths by? Yes, 5 fifths. What do I multiply? 14. 4 fourths. Good. All right. I'm going to multiply these. I'm going to get 55 60. Do so you agree with that? And then over here, I'm going to get 56. 60s. Whoa. How close are they, by the way? Close. They're 1 60th apart. So remember that pi illustration? You can have 60 parts. 1 60th, that's how far apart they are. They're not very far. But which one's bigger then? So here, I have this minus that. So what am I going to get? CT? Good, yes, it's 1 60th, but with a negative, negative 1 60th. So that's very small, by the way. It's a very small number. So they're very close. Okay, yes, sir? Okay. And I hope you didn't think I would leave you without one of these for subtracting. All right, guys, this is this. The first time I gave you a mixed number problem with adding, I was like, okay, that's kind of tough. This time, I want you to get it. Oh, I got this. That's what you say every time. That's because he always got this. <laughs> we're not, we're going to pretend we didn't hear the English on that. Okay, go ahead and work it out, guys. I would make it into an addition problem. That's what I would just do. Because I don't like dealing with all those names. So stay, change, opposite. So rewrite it, so it's stay, change, opposite. I'll help you out with that part. Stay, 
change opposite. Okay, so now I just have one negative, which is nice. I'm adding two numbers with opposite signs. I'm adding two numbers with opposite signs. What do I do with their absolute values? I actually okay. subtract. I'm going to do 4 and 2 thirds minus 1 and 3 fifths. And is my answer going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative. So you know it's got to be negative something. I'm going to subtract those. Good luck on that. Um, yes, sir? Answer. Hold the answer. Let them think. Let them think. Yeah. All right, so it's got to be negative something. Okay, what is the, and I'll let you get the answer in just a minute, Ethan, but what's the common denominator? 15. So I'm going to multiply this by 5 fifths and by 3 thirds down here. 10 fifteenths, 9 fifteenths. So it's 10 fifteenths minus 9 fifteenths. 150. What do you get, Ethan, final answer? Ethan, sorry. What's your final, final answer? Um, 3 and 115. Very close. Negative 3. Negative 3 and 1 15. Mm -hmm. Good job, guys. How many of you got that? Okay, good. How many of you missed the first mixed number problem? That hard one where you got like negative 1 and 37 sixties, And then you got this one, though. Yay, that's what we call improvement. And that took you six minutes to improve. Don't forget. Okay, so yeah, make it addition, make it so much easier. Okay, time out. Pause, halftime. Not a football game, but, a, but real life here. Okay, we are moving from adding and subtracting to multiplying and dividing. Are the rules exactly the same? No, no, yeah, no. Here's the first problem. No, uh, I would say they're pretty different and you want to distinguish them. How do I know that these are actually being multiplied, not added or subtracted? How do I know not adding or subtracting on this one? Uh, yes, Olivia. There's no sign in between this number and this parenthesis. There's no plus or minus. They're right next to each other. Then we're going to call it multiplication. Okay, my answer. Is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Why? Because a positive times a negative is going to be negative. negative. So I'm done with the signs, and now I'm just going to multiply. When you're multiplying, do you align the signs? Or excuse me, time out. When you're multiplying decimals, do you line up decimal points? No, you don't have to. It might. If you do, you make the problem really long, so don't do it. Um, here, it's already naturally set that way. All right, so 12, 25, 0, 2, 4, 2, 7, 6. Where does the decimal point go? Between the positive or negative? So my answer is negative, 6.72. Negative. Good, you've graduated to this problem. Negative three and one fifth times two and a half. When you're multiplying mixed numbers or divided mixed numbers, what do you really want to do with those mixed numbers? You want to change them into improper. So this is the time to change it improper. Adding, subtracting, I would not advise. All right, what does negative 3 and a fifth change to? Negative 16 fifths. What does 2 and a half change to? Five, five. five halves. Is my answer positive or negative again? Negative. negative. I'm done with the signs. I know my answer is going to be negative something. Can you do anything before you actually multiply? What do you do with What's going to make it easier, Day? So you cancel out. What, do you, what would you cancel out? Would be what? Eight and one. Okay. Five and five. What are that? Oh, whoa. All right, what's eight times one? one. Eight, eight times one. one. Eight. What's one times one? one? All right, and it's negative eight. I love doing that, guys, uh, asking you a question. Like, you knew the answer, but you thought I was going to say something else. That's cool. That's cool. I like being kind of like keeping you off, off, off balance. Not for long, I hope. Okay. 
46.8 over negative 2.4. Uh, what are we doing in this problem? Dividing. Dividing. It's a fraction. Isn't it weird? It's a kind of weird, the fraction. You don't normally see them this way, right? It's a division problem. Which number goes in the box? Top. Top. The dividend goes in the box. The divisor goes outside the box. Why don't I have a sign there? Because I already know the answer is going to be? Negative. negative. It's going to be negative something. So I'm done with the sign. So can I divide just the way it is? Why not? Violet? Yeah, the decimal point needs to move once in both. Okay, so then it gives you a more accurate answer, or I, I should just say an accurate one. All right, here we go. 24 goes into 46. Yes, once. 46 minus 24. Good. 22. Bring down that 8. 24 goes into 2, 2, 8. Nine times. Very nice. Nine times 24. 180 plus 2, 216. That's 12. Bring down a 0. 24 goes into 120. Five times. Evenly. Where's my decimal place? Five and the nine, right here. This is right here. I was there. Boom. 19.5. Uh, Positive or negative? You'll get more time. By, guys, you'll get more time to do these on the, on the test. I'm going a little bit quick because I still have to go through several pages of notes. Okay. Uh, let's go with this one. Negative 3 25ths divided by 9 50ths. Boom. Fractions pop back. It's a division problem. How do you know? Division sign. But we don't like dividing fractions the way they are, so we use a little method called stay. Change. Flip. Ooh, and I gotta remember that because sometimes I, I mess it up too, and I've been doing this for years. So three twenty-fifths. Change. Flip. I don't have my negative sign anymore because I already knew my answer was going to be negative. negative. So it gets cluttered if you keep the signs there. You're like, oh, I already know it's negative. So put negative. Okay. And then do yourself a favor by not multiplying as is. Ben, what would you do? Okay, when you got to this part right here, what did you do? Okay, so how'd you do it? Just tell me what to do. Oh, okay, cool. One times two is? One times three is? Oh. Negative two thirds. I haven't finished the problem, Why would you put the answer? I'm sorry. Again, I'm going. I am going a little bit faster, but just to get get us through. You can always watch this online. Watch me from anywhere. Your tablet, mobile device, or computer. Your um, mobile device. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, thank you for watching my channel. Blah, blah, blah. All right, next. All right, Marshall, go ahead. Not yet, but I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the first check to come in. Okay, I looked. Actually, my, my wife, listen, guys. My wife has only watched like two minutes of my channel. In, in the three years I've been doing this, sorry, Mrs. A, throwing her here. But uh, this weekend, I think it was, either Friday or Saturday, I just, I told her to look at it. And we watched it together, and I don't like watching myself, by the way, it's weird. But I was, we watched, I think it was Algebra 1 video. And we were watching, I'm like, oh, see, and then he's going to say this, because I don't remember what was happening. Oh, yeah, he's, that's a great question he's going to ask. Oh, yeah, he's goofing off on that one. Um, but she actually watched a full video of me. I told her, don't forget to like, yeah, click, okay. And then, um, I don't think she even subscribed. That's the sad part, right? So, I'm going to win my wife's favor, but I don't know how. Okay, I have, I think I have 327 videos up there. So that's a lot. That's epic. And I don't even remember what I said in most of them, so, sorry. Okay, this is what kind of problem? 
Um, um, division. It's a division problem. It really means that helps you out. That's what it means. And then if you do your improper fraction, this is what it means. And then I'm going to do stay, change, opposite. And I forgot the negative sign. Nope, it's there at the end. Yes. <laughs> that is correct. All right, so I got negative 10. Um, this is review time. I might even ask you this on the test. Alex, you look like you're thinking. What does my answer mean? What does 10 mean in this problem? It's a bonus question. You mean that it's a whole number? It is a whole number. That is, oh, it, so it, negative 10 would be integer if I just said 10. Yeah, but what does it mean that 10 in relation to these two numbers? What does that mean? That means something. You want to phone a friend? Of course you do. Let's go here with Dana. How many times negative 9 can go into 5? How many times can negative 9 sixteenths fit into 5 and 5 eighths? Negative 10 times. That means if you switched it, to a negative, it would fit into that because what's a negative times a negative? Right, so it goes backwards. Negative times negative is positive. Positive divided by negative is negative, blah, blah, blah. All right, good job. Do you, you remember that, Alex? Good, I might ask you guys again. Hint, hint. All right, yes, we made it. What time do we have? Yes, ma'am, Mary? Oh, man, we got plenty of time here, all right. I'm not going to tell you how to do this problem. I just want to see how you do on your own. Oh, that's a lot of numbers. Oh, oh my man. Negative. Wait. Does that make sense? Is that negative or a positive? Uh, which one? It's negative. It's negative. The one outside? No, it's negative. Oh. There's a zero there. It means time. It means my zero minus half. Okay, here's what we're doing, guys. What does order of operations say to do first? Do what's in the? Parentheses. So just look at the problem like this. Just look at that. You're like, wait, what do we do with that? It's subtraction, but can we change it to addition? So really, I'm going to do negative 7.94 plus negative 4.3. Yeah, I'm just going to work that out. What are, what are two negatives added together going to get me? A negative. A negative. Remember, two negatives multiplied together, give me a positive, but two negatives added together, it's still negative. So I'm just going to add them. 7.94 plus 4.3, don't forget to line up your decimals, adding 4, 12, 12 point. And is it going to be positive or negative? Negative. Okay, so I got negative 12.24. That's in the parentheses. I still have that. Okay, what does this mean? This means what is the opposite of negative 12.24? Guys, do you believe me on this means the opposite of that? Do you believe me on that? Can I prove it to you? No. Yes, I can, Day. Okay, here's going to prove, because I want you to believe me, hopefully, but also, guys, remember I said that there are a lot of ones around? Do you remember me saying there's a lot of ones? Okay, ready? Here's the one. Stay with me. There's a one right here. Okay, there's a one right there. It's there. What's negative one times negative 12.24? Positive. What's a negative times a negative? Positive. So that's how I get it. It's really there. But why is the one there? Sorry? Why is the one there? Uh, because there's an implied one a lot of times where we don't see it. And I'm going to show you where they're all at. There, actually, there's a one here too, times one. Uh, there's a divided by one. There's to the first power on all these ones, right? Do you guys remember all those ones? They're there. Uh, we don't write them all because that gets confusing. Is that confusing? So there's one on every number. There, there's almost one on every number. Yep. Yep. Or a negative one, depending on the number. Okay. Here we go. I want you to write this in exponential form. Write this in exponential form. I want you to write it as a single base to one exponent. Raise your hand and don't call it out. Don't call it out. <laughs> Hannah. A to the fifth power. 
A to the fifth power. That's all you have to write. Next one. I want you to write this as a single base to a single exponent. So I have three bases and three exponents. I want one base, one exponent. Properly stated. Just a moment. I'll let Marshall have this one. Ethan, you can correct him if he needs it. I will correct you more. Okay. When you're multiplying numbers that have the same base, what do you do with those exponents? Add them. Add them. So I should have gotten negative 3 to the? 10th power. 10th power. That would have been your answer. That's exponential form. I hope you guys get that one. What if you had 9 to the 6th over 9 to the 2nd? Don't call it out. I don't want the answer out loud. I want to raise, oh, oh. I raise a hand. Ethan, what do you do when you're dividing two numbers with the same base? How do you handle those exponents? I'm using minus. Yep. So you subtract them. You get 9 to the? Four. Fourth. Guys, how do you subtract? You always do it this way. The top minus the bottom. And I mean it. This minus that. Questions on that? OK. I meant it. E to the negative fourth over E to the second. It's going to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, hold it, hold it. I mean, I know you two have it. You can put your hands down. I got it. Remember, it's the top exponent minus the bottom exponent, no matter what they are. So it should be e to the negative fourth minus 2. Whatever that is, it's the answer. Sam, what's the answer? Um, it is e to the negative second power. No, I mean negative 6 power. What? Negative 6. Okay, how did we get negative 6? Look at this addition, the subtraction problem. Stay, change, opposite. What's negative 4 plus negative 2? Negative 6. So do you know why we practice adding and subtracting? No. Because we want to get to this part. And by the way, are your exponents always going to be integers? They give me fractions and decimals and exponents with exponents. With exponents. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. It's coming. Just don't forget me when I. All right, guys. Ultimate test on this type. Go. Hold it. And listen, if you cannot do it up in your head, write it down. Write down what what is the subtraction problem? What is the subtraction problem? I'll I'll wait for people and then I'll call someone. Okay, I'm gonna write the problem, then I'll get the answer from one of you. I'm gonna write it. It's it would be four to the negative fifth minus negative three. That's what it means. It means this number minus that number. This number minus that number. Which, in essence, would get me what, CT? Um, I'm beginning to think I did this wrong. <laughs> Someone else say it. Never mind. Okay, uh, Aiden back there. Four to the negative second. Because stay, change, opposite would get me negative second. You see how it works? It still works for exponents, too. Okay. Then we get a little more complicated with exponents, but I think you guys can handle this one. I want this written in simplified exponential form. Instead of having two m's, I need to have one m to some power. Instead of having two p's, I want one p to one power. Give you some time. All right, I'm going to take it in two parts. Olivia, what did you get M to? M to the? Third. Wait. Oh, yeah. Remember what we talked about? That one's there. Okay. 
Then I got PCT to the. Seventh power. Edit that YouTube. Okay. Anyway, did you guys get that? Yeah. Uh, M to the third, P to the seventh. Could you have written it P to the seventh, M to the third? Yes. yes. Could you have written it P to the third, M to the seventh? No. no they're, those are different. Those are just switching things up. All right. And then the last type of this problem, M to the seventh, G, M to the second, over M to the third, G, M to the sixth. Reminder, the exponent of M is seven. The exponent of G is one. The exponent of M, exponent of M down here, G, M. Okay. And there are multiple ways of figure this out. We'll go through one of them. Kate, you look like you're ready. Oh, don't worry. I'll give you more time. You actually have to divide because you can't really. What you can do on this problem is simplify the numerator. Just take the numerator and pretend like it's just one problem. Make it as simple as you can. Make the denominator as simple as you can. And then you have this division problem that you can figure out. Hopefully. Okay, Marin. Did you simplify the numerator? Is that how you did it? Uh, Morris, did you simplify the numerator? Yeah. Okay, how is the numerator simplified? How can I make that as simple as possible? Oh, uh, add m to add the m. So it would be m to the ninth power. And then put the g to the first. Okay, so that's simplifying the numerator. Can someone simplify the denominator for me? Yes, Marshall? Um, it would be Okay, now I'm going to say this because I think both of you said it this way. You're multiplying m to the third and m to the sixth, which means you can add three and six, right? You're multiplying those two numbers, which means you can add the exponents. But that's not done because I can still make it simplified. Uh, let's go with Ben. How would I simplify the m? What do you call those? The exponents. exponents. Which you get one over one. Close. What's nine minus nine? Oh, to the zero. M to the zeroth. Uh oh. And then Olivia G to the zeroth, which means you can actually write your answer one. as. So I'm going to take this or this. So both of them I would take because they're both accurate. Sorry? Oh, yeah. What does any number to the zeroth power give me? And so what's any number to the zeroth times any one number to the zeroth? One times one. 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 There's a bunch of ones. What's my time here? Ooh, buzzer beater. The last uh, lesson is dealing with order of operations, and here you go. Oh, I looked at your homework for order of operations. We struggled a little bit when I started throwing decimals and fractions because you're keeping it all straight. Here's how I want you to work this simple one out, I hope, compared to those in the homework. All right, so that's the problem. Okay, listen to me very carefully. Take it one step at a time. And you're like, well, which step do you want me to take? That one. Using the order of operations. Do we have symbols of inclusion? Yes. Yes, we have brackets and we have brace, uh, parentheses. And what am I going to deal with? All the things. One third. One third, yeah, technically there. But you can even think of these as just like division or that's a fraction, that's division. Okay, but I look in the brackets first and then I look at the parentheses. Is there anything to simplify here? Nothing. No, so you're done with the parentheses here. Now I look at the brackets. Are there any other parentheses? Nope, not that I can deal with. Exponent step two, which is? This is something that a lot of people have uh, not liked from these kind of problems, but I have an Algebra one student who showed me all of her steps. She got all of them right. There are others who showed me some of their steps. They got some of them right. Someone who showed me some of their steps got few of them right. 
Where do you think your success is going to lie? In showing all of your steps. This is how I show it. Now listen to me. This is the problem. You don't have to rewrite this necessarily because it'll be on the quiz or it's going to be test. But I would write this again. I just changed this to that. Mr. A, you mean you got to keep writing this over and over? Do you want to get them all right or just some of them right? I don't mind getting some. Okay, fine. Then I can't do anything to help you. But if you want to get them all right, do this. All right. Look at the brackets. Can I do that? Yes. What's 25 minus negative 2? It's also known as 25 plus 2, which is a big fat 27. And I'm writing this down. I'm actually writing this down on my paper. On my work, I actually write every single thing I did. It's called a justification. That means, how can I tell these students how to do this problem? Show them. What would I do next, though? What would I have to do next? Carly? One third times 27, which is what? What's one third of 27? Nine. Divided by three. Nine divided by three? And I love these problems because they always have the same shape. The shape of a funnel. It goes from this really complicated, what were you saying, to I kind of know what you're saying, to oh, I can kind of, there it is. It's right there. That's the answer. It always ends up with one number or a simplified version. That's the answer. All right. Since you guys are so quiet and attentive, here's your last problem. So this is an absolute value sign. That's an absolute value sign. You may begin. Yes, sir. You told you didn't tell Swivel to stop, and he stops. Swivel's going room. No, I I whispered to him. Follow me. Whoa! What? Stop moving. Wow. Yeah, he can hear me even if I'm quieter because he's that good. Okay. Listen to them, but follow me, please. Hello. Oh, oh, he needs a little bit of uh, oil Swivel, on his, on his <laughs> joints. Okay, go ahead and work this one out. Okay, I have two symbols of inclusion. I have the brackets and I have the absolute value signs. So I'm going to do what's in here. What's negative 3.5 divided by 0.25? Well, I know it's going to be negative. So 3.5 divided by 0.25. What do I do at that decimal point? Twice. So I'm going to have 25 into 350. That's once. With the remainder of 10, that's 4. 14. And I did that off to the side because that's my work to justify that. So I got negative, negative 4.7, minus the absolute value of negative 14. Okay, see I justified this step. I said, what is that stat? Okay, what would I have to do next? Yes, sir? Morris? Yeah, what is the absolute value of negative 14? So here's my next step. It says 14. Then what would I have to do? This. Negative 4.7 minus 14. Stay, change, opposite. So you're just adding them. And you get 18.7 negative. So that's all I did. I rewrote everything else. What's the opposite of negative 18.7? Oh, look at that. Do you have any homework? Study for your quiz. I excel, the video. Random Google things that you can find. What they said. Bye -bye.